This morning we're going to talk about how to find unused stored procedures. In a previous video, I posted how to find the last run date of a stored procedure. However, you may need to um, find out when a stored procedure or when a stored procedure basically if a stored procedure is not used or whatnot. This is not going to apply to small environments where you have one or two developers because it's just a simple conversation between the two of them. This applies to bigger environments. So you might remember that the uh, query that we looked at this last time was this query where we're looking at the, the last execution time uh, from this table right here, uh, DM exec procedure stats, and it'll show the last execution time. Well, there's a really big weakness with this, and I'll show you that live here. And what that weakness is, let's suppose that I restart my server. What will happen is, is it will flush out this data. So we will not be, we will not be able to see the last execution time of our stored procedures. And the reason why that's a problem is because, yeah, oh, one second, it's the query's no longer open. Hold on. Uh, the reason why that is is because it doesn't actually store that data. It only stores that data while it's while the server is live. Once you restart it, then it no longer is there. So as you can see, they're gone. So obviously, that's a problem uh, for us because we're not going to be allowed to track unused stored procedures. Um, so one of the, the easy ways to track unused stored, or not easy way, but one of the ways you can track stored procedures is tracing. There is a big drawback to tracing, and I've, I've used the tracing method, especially early in my SQL years, and that is the traces is going to assume that in a month of tracing, that if a stored procedure hasn't been used or you haven't seen it in the traces, therefore it's unused. Some stored procedures may be called, let's say, every two months or every three months. Some stored procedures may be called every six months. So tracing is has a huge weakness and a huge drawback because you have to make assumptions. Again, if you're in a small environment, there's no big deal. You just have a, a discussion with the developers. Okay, hey, is this used? Is this not used? Um, but in a big environment like the one that I'm currently working in, you have uh, 30 or 40 different teams, and that that's a lot of work, and then people never can remember if they call it or not, and they look at their code, and it just takes a very long time. So uh, one of the things that I posted to GitHub, and I can't sit there and go through all the code uh, today. Um, I'm not going to sit there and type it all out. But one of the things that I, I put on GitHub, I'll copy and paste this, is... And you can see where it's at. It's on SQL Server, Admin Tools, Cleaning, and it's called Proc Maintenance. But what this will do is it will, for each database, you can see right here, it's going to use each database. It will call that from here. But it will build, first of all, a schema if there's no schema admin or ADM. Um, then it will create a table if this table does not exist, which is ADM main proc log. It will store the procedure name and the last call date. That will be, those are the columns I mean. And uh, one thing to note here too is, well, you could also put object ID instead if you wanted. That's no big deal. Then it will uh, look for a stored procedure name, uh, main log procedures. And if it doesn't exist, then it will go ahead and build this stored procedure, which what this does is this inserts into that table uh, the name of the procedure and the last execution time kind of what we looked at earlier, where the name is not in the table already. So if the new store procedure is created, then it'll insert the new one, otherwise it won't insert the old ones. Then what it does is it will update the last call date on that table. So this is something that should be, and I'll show you in a second, but this is something that should be run um, in non-production hours, but this will go in and it'll update it. And it will, um, yeah, it will update the last call time daily so that even if the server is restarted it still has it stored and then of course it will delete from that table where the procedure name is uh, no longer in system procedure so if someone deletes a procedure it will remove it from that table okay so that's what this does and this again this builds everything 
So for every database, it builds everything. So what happens if you already have this stored on a database? You can run it again if you create a new database, and it won't affect all of the other databases that exist. It will only affect the database that does not have it. Okay, and then let's go over here. Now, of course, this is 2012, the rest of this. So that's that. This right here is a script for a job that runs in the evening. Um, one quick point, I can't look at all of this here, but what I'll say is you will want to change this for your server instance, obviously. And then when you build the job, if you're using 2012, you, want to, you will want to look at right here, which is going to be the time that it runs. So you will want to make sure that it's running at the appropriate time. You may want it to run during the day. In fact, you may have an active server at night instead. But the reason why this is useful as opposed to traces, and I found this is far more effective, is that um, with, with this, it's very simple, it's very light. Even if you have, in one of our servers, we have 3,000 store procedures, yet we only use 200 of them. It doesn't take a long time uh, to keep uh, track of. And then, of course, you have easy access to that table. That table will exist on every one of your databases, and you can just look at it and review. And so then you can look at uh, when the time hasn't been used in six months or whatnot, or um, depending on you know how your developers uh, use their store procedures. It makes it easy to track, like I said, traces. There's a lot of drawbacks to traces as far as there's just a lot of assumptions going into there. Uh, that, by contrast, you can print it out. For instance, our teams each use a database, so you can print out the results of that table and say, hey, this is what we found. These are store procedures that haven't been used in six months. And so it's a conversation with those developers that immediately is like, oh yeah, we don't, we don't use those anymore. So that's something that uh, is, is useful for tracking. It's kind of like, I like to think of it as a vacuum cleaner, just looking at you know, what, what's being used, what's not being used. And it's something that's built very quickly and then the job runs and the job does not take um, more than a minute to, uh, it didn't even take a minute to run. So it's not a long process whatsoever. But that way you can track your unstored, unused stored procedures and it's, there's not a lot of overhead cost. There's not a lot of assumptions going into it. And that's something to, to start earlier rather than later.